Hello students, welcome to the online lecture on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. In today's lecture, we will continue with the simulation demonstration of photonic crystal or topological photonic crystal based waveguides. So this lecture is basically part 2. Here we will be mainly looking into the video demonstration of an actual waveguide kind of structure and then we will be using uh, CST Microwave Studio Suite for doing the simulation. So that will actually give you an idea of how things work in console which you have seen in the previous lecture and also in CST Microwave Studio Suite which you will be seeing today. Now why we have been stressing so much on this topological photonic crystal based webguides and other structure simulation because this is a very very popular topic of research worldwide and lot of researchers have been actively working on this and this is why we have been focusing on this particular area. So as you have already seen in the previous lecture about the simulation demonstration of the band diagram of topological value photonic crystal unit cell and the edge state dispersion diagram. Okay. We will now see in this lecture how with all this information okay, that is uh, whether the design is going to exhibit uh, topological behavior or not. Okay. All these things we understood from the dispersion diagram and the calculation of the topological edge states. Now we should go ahead and uh, try to design the waveguide. Okay. So as I mentioned in this particular tutorial video, uh, will be showing you with uh, console, uh, not console, uh, CHT Microwave Studio Suite software. Okay. So this is a quick recap of the two types of unit cell. So this was VPCA uh, and this is VPCB. Okay. So this is unit cell one. This is unit cell two, and this is the actual structure. So. As you can see, I will go into the details of the entire waveguide. So this is the connector. So this is basically the input terahertz signal. Okay. And this is S21 that shows transmission. So this is the waveguide port. Okay. So what are these two? These are basically WR3 hollow waveguide. Okay. And this is your um, terahertz topological photonic based uh, passive device. So, this is basically a waveguide okay, that you have designed. Now, what you can clearly see that we are basically using two different colors for uh, VPC type A and this is VPC type B. So, here pay attention to this when the small triangle and the small triangle inverted small triangle are coming close to each other, they are basically forming this interface. And this continues okay, till here. So this is where v, VPC type A and VPC type B are forming the interface. Okay. Now then there is a sharp band of 120 degrees here. Okay. So what happens in this sharp edge? So we are basically zooming in here. And you can see that now the in interface is between two different types in VPC type B itself. So in VPC type B, you can actually have the smaller triangle on the top. So the neighbor should be, should have, okay, such an orientation that the smaller triangle is next to this, okay. So that is how you form the domain wall and this is how you can extend it further. So this is the way you can actually make this interface take the sharp bands 120 degrees here and 60 degrees here and then it can go like this. That shows you the capacity and capability of making any sharp band waveguide using valley photonic crystals okay, or topological photonic insulators. Now you must be remembering why we are doing this because this uh, waveguides will be robust to any kind of defect and imperfection so there will be no loss at all while propagating through this particular waveguides. Okay. So this is how the actual device will look like. So you will basically have tapered couplers at both ends. So this is also another model that shows 
that you have put the tapered couplers and this is the area of the um, chip okay so this is 120 degrees 60 degrees and so on okay and this is how the 3d view of the uh, photon crystal slab looks like you see this is the finite thickness okay and then these are the tapers which go into the tapered couplers that goes into this hollow wave guys wr3 so you can have uh, input port here and then you can have output port over here okay so the dimensions of this wr3 hollow wave guide are chosen so that they can support the t mode the fundamental one okay because that is the one that you are exciting here so the dimension of the hollow wave guide the width and length are basically given here okay so this is typically the system that you are going to uh, see how it works okay so now we will look into the video demonstration of the same using uh, cst microwave studio suite so our ta for the course dibaskar Biswas will take you through this particular video demonstration and that will give you a complete idea how you can go ahead from the scratch to design topological photonics based web guides so hello students uh, so welcome to this um, uh, part 2 of the uh, series on uh, simulation of uh, topological photonics based uh, wave guides so here actually uh, we shall be analyzing uh, based on the uh, previous uh, uh, part of the uh, of this series where we discussed about the uh, the unit cell and uh, also the regarding the uh, unit cell band diagram and then the uh, topological edge state dispersion diagram so we saw that uh, we got the edge states for the ab type design and also for the ba type design now we shall be um, analyzing or we shall be designing the entire uh, for topological photonic crystal slab and uh, we shall see how uh, uh, when we'll be uh, bringing together the vpc a and vpc b so uh, that interface the interface between them will act as the waveguide so this is uh, you can see in the screen uh, there's uh, this uh, an interface actually uh, this is this is this is the interface of the software called cst studio suit uh, this is commercially available so so uh, after uh, after clicking on this uh, software you what you need to do is you just go to new template you create a new actually template here and after clicking this uh, you you can see there are many options of project template uh, like you uh, if you want to work in the low frequency that is the megahertz or hertz domain uh, or if you want to uh, in the microwaves rf and optical domain so this is the working area then if you want to in uh, work in the electronics then emc or the particle dynamics so these are basically the typical uh, uh, the interfaces the, which actually cst is uh, uh, providing us so this is actually uh, very much similar to the physics interface of uh, the console and that you have already seen so uh, we'll be uh, actually working in this microwaves and rf or, or optical domain so we just select this so after selecting this uh, it will provide a list of options that is your antennas uh, the circuit and components the radar cross section and uh, the um, biomedical exposure all these things so we'll just go down and we'll select the periodic structures and uh, in the periodic structures after clicking this you click next here and then it will uh, so will, it will ask to select a um, workflow so this uh, workflow is actually basically um, uh, it is asking that whether you are designing a unit cell for uh, fss metamaterial or whether it is a full structure or metamaterial fss full structure or it is a metamaterial full structure so fss means the frequency selective surface so we are not actually co concerned with our uh, analysis is not concerned with the fss it is uh, mainly on the metamaterial actually full structure so we'll be selecting the third option that is the metamaterial full structure so we'll be, after selecting this you go to next and then now you can see that there are uh, two important uh, solvers actually so it is asking that uh, which is the uh, what solver uh, yeah, you need to use it okay so 
there are actually uh, other solvers are also there like the eigen mode solvers and uh, uh, other uh, stationary solvers are also there but here in cst um, actually in if you work in the rf domain or optical domain uh, so uh, two types of uh, solvers actually are recommended so that is the time domain and the frequency domain uh, solver so so actually basically uh, you can see here uh, it is already written that in the frequency domain it is for smaller models so our uh, the slab structure actually it's a uh, this uh, actually the the model is actually pretty big because uh, as i'll be uh, designing the structure you uh, you can see that how uh, the structure is actually uh, like from micrometer the dimension that the entire dimension of the slab goes to uh, a millimeter actually so that's why uh, it is uh, for uh, for bigger models um, uh, time domain actually uh, solver is preferred so you click uh, the uh, that is actually by default uh, it comes uh, the time domain so you just click here and then go to next now it uh, actually uh, asks for uh, selecting the units so whatever units by default it will come uh, because the dimensions are uh, it is by default in micrometer wavelength or frequency it is in millimeter or gigahertz time is on femtoseconds temperature is on kelvin and rest of the things are by default you cannot change only you can change only the first four things but you don't need to change here because our dimensions are in the micrometer you can if you can recall that the lattice periodicity is 242.5 uh, uh, micrometer so we uh, don't need to change here and also the frequency is in gigahertz actually so uh, the wh whatever default units uh, the cst gives uh, you don't have to uh, uh, change it so just uh, uh, click on next actually and then you can see here uh, you need to provide the uh, wavelength or the frequency so we are actually concerned with the frequency here so you need to provide the range for which the simulation will be performed so you need to give the minimum frequency and maximum frequency so if you can remember the band diagram that we did in comsol uh, so that uh, band diagram actually uh, in the band diagram uh, the band opening uh, upon breaking the symmetry the band opening uh, was from around uh, 310 to 3 uh, more or less 335 or 337 it was so uh, that was the band opening so what we do is that we just uh, take a little further below that uh, a little bit further above the particular range of the band gap so 310 so we take generally 300 as the minimum and frequency maximum frequency uh, we take it as 350 okay so we just uh, take it uh, slightly uh, above uh, slightly like uh, uh, bigger the uh, uh, the band gap margin and now uh, after uh, uh, putting this uh, values of frequency you what you need to do is uh, like monitors so what uh, kind of field you will uh, or what kind of uh, like uh, analysis you uh, 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 like um, we'll be doing so cst also ask this so we actually are concerned with the magnetic field distribution here so we'll be uh, doing analyzing the magnetic field so we just click it here uh, so uh, take this uh, um, box and then uh, in the below you just uh, take this uh, reflectance transmittance and absorbance because we are will be mainly dealing with the transmittance actually we will be checking the s21 parameter so after click after filling all this you just click next here and then again finish so your uh, working environment will be uh, will get ready here so you can see that uh, this is basically typically the uh, working interface of the cst so you can see this is the box here so this is actually inside that box your uh, model uh, will be designed and this is the that uh, small uh, square uh, sheet actually it is there so it is known as the uh, working plane so if you want to uh, deselect this working plane you just go to view and then you can click here and tick it off okay but uh, i just generally keep it uh, like this only and you can uh, yeah uh, for, as for the bounding box you can uh, uh, disable it for the time being now uh, it is actually the the uh, the um the view is uh, you can see uh, in the simulation box it is actually slightly tilted so if you want to take the 2d 2d view so what you do is just click uh, on the mm, uh, press the, uh, the on the keypad uh, option you just press the number 5 so if you press number 5 so it will uh, 
come to its uh, 2D uh, angular projection, okay, 2D view. And um, and uh, uh, so if you press control and if you uh, uh, left click the mouse and if you move it like this, so you can move your structure like this, okay. And uh, and simply uh, removing and simply clicking left clicking on the mouse if you uh, pull it down, pull it left, right, up, down, left, right. So you can move your structure like this. But uh, this is on your uh, 2D uh, on a 2D uh, projection, okay. Uh, but if you for a slanting projection, uh, you need to click uh, control and then the left click and then you click five for bringing it back to this original position. So this was about uh, the uh, interface of the CST. So now we'll be uh, strictly directly going to the uh, modeling of our design. So let me quickly show you. So this was uh, the model actually here. You can see this is the unit cell one, the VPC A and this is the VPC B or the unit cell 2 and they are brought together and this interface will be acting as the waveguide and we'll be typically designing this actually structure here. So this is the this brown, if you can see here, if I show this, yeah. So this is the PEC box. So inside that the tapered uh, coupler is there and uh, this uh, box is actually, uh, uh, we will apply the material called PEC and because PEC mimics the uh, property of metal here. So in like in real life scenario while testing this uh, this lab structure, the circuit. So while testing this model, so in place of that uh, that uh, hollow rectangular box will be uh, replaced by the metal metal waveguide. Okay, and uh, we shall be mainly we will designing this uh, interface like this uh, and this uh, interface, this zigzag uh, path will be acting as the waveguide here. Okay, so I guess uh, this is uh, clear uh, to everyone. So we'll be going again to the CST. So now in the uh, in the modeling part, so what we'll do is that in the modeling part, uh, uh, we'll be uh, clicking on the, the curves. So and then we'll be clicking on polygon here. So it here it uh, shows a dialog box like uh, the double click polygon points in working plane. So press escape to show the dialog box. Okay. So you just press the escape key and this uh, coordinate uh, uh, pop up box will appear. So you just uh, put it, put the uh, coordinates of the rhombus that you have already done in, in uh, your console. So first point is the 0, 0 origin point. Second is the minus A. Uh, then so after clicking minus a it will ask the value of a here so you might remember that a is the 242.5 so you don't need to uh, give this um like this so it is not valid okay so in console uh, we had to uh, uh, give the unit also but we in cst we have already mentioned the unit if you can remember uh, on the starting of our uh, this uh, the cst software so it asked the uh, the unit of the dimension. So we give micrometer. So you just click 242.5 and just click OK. So we'll be quickly uh, uh, this uh, putting the uh, values here. So now you can see that uh, in console we did what we did is that in console we directly wrote like this square root of three. So this is this uh, command is actually not valid here in CST. So root three should be written like this three to the power. 0 0.5 okay so this is root 3 into a by 2 okay so now the third point third point is 3 to the power 0 0.5 into uh, a by 2 and then the final initial point okay so just scrolling the mouse you can zoom in and you can zoom out like this so our rhombus is ready here. So it is a 2D structure. We'll uh, we'll make it into 3D. We'll see, see it later on. So now next uh, we need to uh, design the big triangle and the small triangle. Okay. So that is your um, this kind. Yes. This is the big triangle and this is the small triangle. So we need to design this. So what we need to do is that uh, you can see in, in below in the, uh, in the in the bottom actually you see this is the parameter list. So you click on new parameter, double click on new parameter. So you need to define all those uh, parameters here. So like what we did in console. So we 
defined all those variables so you just one by one you define it so it is 0 0.65 into a then your l2 is your 0 0.35 into a then uh, m is your uh, 3 to the power 0 0.5 um, that is your into l1 by 2 i think you are root 3 l1 by 2 then n is your root 3 um, l2 by 2 then your uh, p is uh, given by uh, a divided by uh, 3 to the power 0 0.5 that is your a by root 3 and uh, q is your uh, root 3 a by 6 so this is your root 3 into a by 6 okay so after defining all those variables here so now we'll be again going to the curves click on polygon because uh, like in console also in cst um, like whatever whatever we face the difficulty in console uh, the similar difficulties faced here in um, cst also so uh, there are no actually direct uh, way of uh, like uh, designing the equilateral triangle here so we don't have those uh, shapes here uh, so we need to uh, go by the coordinate method okay then pre press escape uh, you give the the name is uh, like whatever it is big triangle so now uh, you one by one you uh, put the the geometry of coordinates of the, uh, the big triangle here so minus a and then it will be p minus of uh, two third of m two third of m then it is minus of uh, okay minus of a minus uh, l1 by 2 then you give your p plus uh, one third of m okay. now it is minus of a uh, plus uh, l1 by 2 minus of f plus l1 by 2 and it give your your p uh, plus uh, one third uh, into uh, m so this is ha huh, and this uh, minus of a given by p uh, then uh, your minus it is your two third of m okay back to the original position here so so your uh, big triangle is ready so we designed this big triangle now again we click on curves and then you click on uh, the polygon here and then click escape and then we design the small triangle so we need to uh, enter the coordinates here so it is actually your minus a by 2 uh, minus l2 by 2 and this is your uh, q minus of uh, one third into n and uh, this is minus a by 2 minus a by 2 uh, oh, sorry minus a by minus a by 2 then plus your l2 by 2 and then it is your q again i think minus uh, uh, one third uh, into n now you go to like minus a by 2 then you go again q plus and then your 2 third into n and then you go again uh, to uh, your minus a by 2 uh, minus uh, l2 by 2 then you go q minus of uh, 1 third into n okay so i think uh, yeah so this uh, so this is your smaller triangle so to click ok here so our uh, unit cell is ready here you can see so this is the 2d structure so for making it into 3d you go to this curve option you can see here in the left uh, uh, panel you can see the under the navigation tree you can see curves you just expand it curve one expand the curve one you can see this polygon one this is the rhombus big triangle and small triangle
so you do uh, you use the facility of extrude so what does extrude uh, does is that um, so extrude is basically you just uh, project your 2d structure into a 3d so you give a finite thickness to your 2d structure using this extrude option but you might be uh, so while doing this you don't uh, uh, like uh, do it actually uh, together all you don't uh, select all these three uh, structures and do uh, do this actually uh, together because this will create uh, some error here okay so just do it one by one click on polygon here and then you click this option extrude curve click this so this will appear red and then you press enter so this will come here so you can see the thickness now one thing you just don't directly give th thickness you need to see the direction of projection okay so you click press control here and then with the mouse you just rotate it so you can see that the direction of the arrow it is going downward okay so you we want this thickness to project downward okay so that's why here you have to give only 200 so th the thickness is actually uh, 200 here uh, so we are taking the thickness as 200 micrometer and we'll give plus 200 you will see how a minus 200 will also come okay so after clicking this you don't directly click okay you just see the preview okay so see it is actually a correct way of projection and in the material you go down in the material you just select a load from material library here you click on silicon so it is loss free you select this loss free silicon and then load okay preview and then okay so this is the uh, rectangular uh, the rhombus 3d box now you uh, click on the big triangle then again extrude and then again enter so you see the direction is downward so you just click 200 silicon is the material preview and then you click ok now it will show one pop-up box this is because this triangle has become a 3d model and also inside the uh, 3d model of rhombus so these two shapes are now intersecting so it is asking whether i uh, should keep it like this or i should add both the shapes or intersect or cut away okay so what we do is that we just keep it none okay we don't want to do any operation here so we just uh, do it we keep it as none and then press okay similarly for small triangle also extrude see now you can see that its direction is upward okay so we need downward projection so that's why we have to click here minus 200 click here preview see now it is going downward okay that's why i told that you don't select all the geometries and do the extrude uh, simultaneously you do it one by one and click ok here then again none here okay so our uh, unit cell is ready now you need to uh, make triangular hole because this model this triangular uh, shape you need to make it uh, as a hole actually here so for doing this you go to component now so expand it you will see all those solids have come so what you need to do is that you need to subtract this bigger triangle and smaller triangle from the rhombus okay so for that how you do you just uh, click solid one that is the rhombus and then on the keep on your um, keyboard you click minus okay and then you click you select both the triangles that is your solid two and using control press control and then click you you selected both and then you press enter see so now you can see that it is a hole actually so we created triangular hole and this is the this is our um, vpca okay so you can change the material color also by clicking on solid one right, right click and then you go down you can see assign material and color so this color actually is actually matching with the background so you need to change the color here actually so you make it as uh, red here click ok so then you click press 5 so it will go down so now we have created our first unit cell so now we need to create this so this is this part is done now we need to create the bottom part so that the interface is made so we know that we can do this just by uh, 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 taking the mirror mirror projection of this unit cell what you need to do is that 
um, you double click on this structure and this transform will will get enabled okay so this is the transform feature uh, similar to your boolean operation or the uh, transform uh, transform operation of your console so in this you expand it you can see mirror here option so you click on mirror so you click copy because we want a copy of this model okay and uh, so here it will uh, show one thing that is uh, it will ask for uh, the mirror plane normal okay so mirror plane normal means this is the mirror plane okay this is the mirror plane and it will ask uh, uh, the normal so we, in which direction the mirror plane normal is there so this is the x axis and the, this is the y axis the particle axis so mi your mirror plane normal is the y axis so that's why you just uh, give the value of 1 in y okay so if i do preview so you can see that uh, it has already come here so you can see and this is the interface actually okay and this is the mirror, mirror plane origin so your origin is actually mirror plane origin is the zero zero actually that's why you don't uh, change the values here okay so you just click preview and then click ok see so this um, or um, this structure is actually completed so you might be wondering that uh, in this figure this um this uh, yeah so this uh, rhombus actually it is oriented like this and in cst it is actually oriented like this so that doesn't matter actually because we just want the mirror version okay we could have uh, we also we can also do it like this by taking uh, there by translating there and then again rotating so we, because it will uh, actually uh, it means the same operation actually here so we are just creating the interface what we just wanted that uh, that just near the interface okay just near the interface this if if there is smaller triangle in the uh, in the uh, upper portion of the unit cell so there should be smaller triangle also in the bottom part of the unit cell second unit cell so that actually creates the interface uh, or we can say the domain wall okay now if it might happen that if there is one uh, smaller triangle and here if we keep bigger triangle here and smaller triangle so that will not create the domain okay, you might be uh, physically seeing the interface but it will not create the topological domain which is required so for topological domain there if there is small triangle in the upper part there should be another small triangle in the uh, bottom part and this is vice same for the vice versa for the big triangles okay uh, so 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 we just uh, change the color actually here otherwise it will look same here so we click to ok make it green so what you need to do is that after doing this you uh, um, you first save your project because sometimes it happens is that whenever the when the model becomes very huge uh, uh, your software might get um, uh, uh, in, uh, might get an error and it will uh, it will automatically shut down so your um, your work will not get saved also that's why you click Control s and then you save it okay so this is your like uh, new uh, demo save okay so because we, we need to save our project to work because otherwise it will uh, suddenly uh, it will uh, stop actually so that's uh, uh, that might occur actually during your if the model become very huge so after uh, doing this now you can see here in this uh, diagram so you can see this is repeated um, if you can if you can visualize so see this unit cell actually is repeated here in this direction and this unit cell is repeated in this direction and you can see here the domain wall is made here and then again it is repeated and again here the domain wall is made here okay so you can see we, we will see how this domain wall is made so there is actually repetition of uh, unit cells going on okay in the top portion also uh, and in the left and right portion also so what is that we will also be doing so here we will be using the translate option so again you just um, you select uh, those two unit cells like uh, this yeah this and this control and then click on transform 
you click on translate so on translate you click on copy okay and then you uh, what is the translation vector so it is actually the lattice periodicity because we want the uh, uh, because the adjacent uh, uh, rhombus will be the distance of a lattice periodicity so we click a here and then repetition factor so what is the number of repetitions we want so we, we can take it as 10 here so you see you just zoom out so you can see that this is the structure that is actually getting made here so after so you just click preview and then click ok see so our uh, unit cell actually has uh, has been designed like this so you can see see this smaller triangle and this smaller triangle of the two unit cells so and this is the interface here okay so this will create the domain wall, topological domain wall. okay so now what we we'll need to do is that um, so you need to focus here in this unit cell so in this unit cell here this will go down and there another another rhombus will come like this and this will be just the opposite of this we'll we'll get to know how uh, this is done such that um, uh, the domain wall now actually it goes downward okay now it, here actually it is going like this in the right direction in the right direction uh, like uh, from left to right it is going but here actually the domain wall will move down like this slanting so we need an, another rhombus where the smaller triangle will face this uh, this smaller triangle here so what we need to do is that and and this upper unit cell actually will repeat as it is okay uh, there is no change so what we need to do is that uh, you uh, click on this double click on this okay and then what you need to do is you go to transform you translate it first okay put a uh, take the copy option you keep on one uh, that give us a preview okay so you click on okay so now you can see see the smaller triangle is facing the bigger triangle so domain wall has not been created here so you double click again and then go to transform and then you go to rotate okay now you don't tick the copy because we are doing we are making changes on this design only okay so you don't uh, um, create a copy of this design okay so the rotation axis so we need to rotate it 180 degree okay this smaller triangle will come here this bigger triangle will come there go there so that's why we rotation angle is around is along the z axis okay so you can see this rotation axis so that's why it is 180 degree along the z axis and you click shape center because we don't because the origin is this this origin only shape center so along the center of this unit cell it will rotate so see now you can see uh, we are clicking the preview you can see this smaller triangle has come so it's facing this a smaller triangle here so um, so that's why now you click ok see now the domain actually has been made you can see this smaller triangle is facing this smaller triangle of this of this unit cell so now uh, so this domain wall has been made now we need to uh, repeat it along this slanting direction okay so for that what we need to uh, do is that um, okay so this entire uh, unit cell will be repeated downward okay and then we can repeat it this also so first what we need to do is that you double click this then press control you select all these unit cells and then you click on trans transform then translate now here you click copy here and now here the translation vector is a bit tricky one okay so why because let me go to a blank yeah blank slide yeah so if i take the pointer so your um, rhombus is like this okay so in order to um, so this is your this is your a by 2 option so now your um, let me do row like this so this rhombus will be shifted to this part okay, a copy will be made 
so what it means is that uh, your rhombus actually will come downward okay so it will shift by an amount this vertical which is nothing but your uh, root 3 a by 2 if you can remember okay and it will shift laterally how much by this distance and this is nothing but your a by 2 okay so your lateral shifting is your minus a by 2 and downward shifting is your minus root 3 by 2 this is the translation vector so you just keep this in mind so this is your uh, minus a by 2 and this is your uh, minus 3 to the power 0 0.5 into a by 2 so click preview see now it is coming okay so we take copy of i think it will be fine yeah it will be fine so preview and then click ok so the array has been made you can see this is the array now uh, the domain will not extend uh, entirely to the end of the slab it will it might it can go up to here or might be to here not not way down okay otherwise the field will actually uh, like it will penetrate and it will come out of the like it will uh, it will um, radiate uh, outside the slab structure so will not make the interface too deep inside the slab so now we will be double clicking and then translating like this minus a by 2 minus 3 to the power 0 0.5 into a by 2 yeah so we'll be doing i think five is better no four is better yeah four is better okay yeah so you can see the domain is it is coming like this from left to right and then it is moving downward okay so this the zigzag path okay so this is the zigzag path so we are now here okay so we have designed this uh 120 degree slanting band position and now we need to design this straight position um, part and then again slant and then again in straight and then we will be designing the coupler also so now after this uh, so this portion this uh, unit cell portion will be repeated again okay so what we need to do is that double click control so translate here op and then this a and this you give it as 8 oh, 8 is fine yeah 8 is fine preview so yeah so now here what you need to do is that you just copy it so see this domain will come here and then again this domain will continue like this as a straight so you just double click this point and then translate option here copy then click click a then click on 9 and 9 so preview and then ok so you can see this if you can visualize this domain is coming from left to right and then it is going in slanting oblique positions downward and then now it is going straight ok now you can see here here also the domain will get created so bigger triangle is coming facing this domain so you need to uh, fit the rhombus like this such that the bigger triangle will come here so again we will uh, select all those uh, double clicking all those rhombus here and then we click on translate here copy and then click a okay so you click on uh, preview and then click ok now you can highlight them because we need to rotate them so rotate and now you need to copy here 180 degree preview yeah fine see now the domain is created yeah okay so this will come like this and this will go like this okay so now it will uh, this uh, part 
this part actually will continue okay so there are no changes here so we'll just uh, select this and then uh, translate here and uh, you click on it it will be um, might be less click on 10 because uh, some unit cells will be merged for the coupler here so your domain path will get shorter that's why you just try to keep as much uh, sufficient number of unit cells so you keep 10 and then click ok so you can see now how big the model is getting okay so and here also you just click double click here translate a this is 12 no sorry 11 so here you can see there is no domain here so um, yeah in this big triangle it is going so see it is not creating a topological domain because smaller triangle is facing the bigger triangle so no topological domain is creating here the topological domain is getting created here see this it will go like this now here actually the smaller triangle should come so we simply double click this and we translate it b a and then it should be i think 12 no 18 no 20 yeah 20 yes okay. so our design is almost ready uh, just we need to uh, repeat our upper unit cells in the upper direction so now you see after coming this then the domain is coming here and then again it is going from left to right in a straight direction okay so the domain is ready here so we just need to now we need to select all those red unit cells So after select, selecting this, you click on transform, translate, and then uh, you copy, and now it will be shifted uh, backward, no? So that's why it is minus a by 2. But now it is in the upper direction, vertically upper direction, so that's why it is positive, root 3 a by 2. We don't give minus here. And then it is 8, 8 is fine, or maybe 10 we can keep, yeah. Preview, then OK. So now you click Control S because the model has become bigger. So just save it. Otherwise, it might it might get closed also. Okay, so this is the kind of array uh, slab structure. Now you can see that uh, it has become an arrow kind of design. So this uh, slanting positions and this uh, like uh, like uh, the arrow of, uh, head position. So we need to cut down this. Uh, this uh, portion so that our uh, structure becomes like this uh, yeah so it becomes a rectangular uh, box type so for cutting this one what we need to do is that um, so we need to select those points and then create a polygon here okay so you go to curves here and then polygon and then instead of clicking the escape point because it will ask for coordinate and we don't know the coordinate co because if you go by the coordinate way so it will be a bit uh, uh, like uh, a time consuming method so you just click on the uh, uh, p button on the keyboard so it will tell to uh, select which point you, you want as the initial point of the uh, polygon so you click this double click and then you start going downward so this line will appear and this is the edge of the polygon actually so it will start going downward 
we slowly go downward okay yeah so you click again here p and then you double click for joining again click p for joining this point then you move downward upward sorry and then you click p and then double click and then you go upward then you click p and then double click see now your polygon has is ready okay and just you click okay so this is the 2d structure here we will be again extruding it now you do this same thing for this um, here also okay so just need to check whether this straight line where will this straight line will meet at this point okay. so you just go to curves polygon then p you just click double click here and then you carefully you make it align vertically so it makes it a straight line Okay. Down like this. Yeah. So it will come here. So we just click on P. So then again, I'm click on P here. Then you go to upward, and then go to P here. then go upward then you click on p double click and then you click on uh, your uh, p again and then double click yes this polygon is now ready click okay so now we need to extrude these two polygons okay so you do it one by one don't uh, has it, uh, but first you need to save otherwise the model has become very big okay so you just uh, click on polygon this and then extrude option and uh, you just uh, click enter so the direction is actually uh, uh, outward this uh, the simulation area so we want downward projection that's why minus 200 so you click preview the mat check the material that is silicon then you click okay so it will ask uh, what to do with the uh, this model whether we need to uh, this intersect or we need to combine it so we don't uh, do anything to the our model you just click none to all if you click none then it will take one by one one by one all of this so just none to all finish so you click again on this polygon then extrude you click enter so its direction is downward so we just will click 200 only so preview and okay then none to all yeah fine now what we need to do is that we need to minus this entire structure we need to select this uh, structure subtract this entire structure from sorry we need to uh, subtract this uh, this polygon you can see this polygon and this polygon from the entire our slab structure how we do is that we click this and then we hold shift and we go downward okay and click here because this is the solid this is that these are the two polygons to be to be uh, removed so you click up to here your entire slab will get selected you click minus and then you select those two solids after selecting you just press enter it will take some time to do this operation maybe two to three minutes and press enter and just uh, wait for a few minutes because uh, what what uh, it does is that uh, actually it it uh, subtracts uh, those uh, unit cells because inside this polygon there are a lot of unit cells are there so what it does is that it takes individually unit cell and it will uh, subtract it from all of those unit cells inside this inside this entire uh, uh, slab structure okay so it will do it one by one that's, that, that's why uh, it uh, takes actually uh, some time so this is how you uh, create a topological uh, so this kind of error will come okay so you, you don't have to worry about it uh, because see that that operation has got finished so when it is trying to uh, subtract this from uh, from here so it is not finding any uh, structure here 
to subtract. So that's why uh, this kind of error comes. So just click on OK. So it will come again and again. So just uh, what you do to what you need to do is that you press uh, you press the enter button, enter button on the keyboard. You press it for a long time. So it will go it will go it like this. Okay. So this error will come because it will appear again and again. So it will it becomes uh, uh, actually irritating to uh, to write to actually click again and again. Okay. So just uh, hold on the enter button, enter button actually. So uh, this is basically how uh, topological uh, slab structure actually is uh, simulated actually. Um, so like uh, you uh, you uh, create the interface. Uh, so the interface is not like uh, uh, like uh, a, a casual type interface. So you in, you need to ensure that if a smaller triangle it is is facing the interface of first unit cell. So for the bottom unit cell also the smaller triangle should face the interface. And then only the topological uh, domain will actually get created. So using this interface, we have designed this uh, zigzag waveguide. Uh, we can also design a straight waveguide wave uh, that I will uh, show you. And then we'll be after uh, we design this uh, slab structure, then we'll be uh, designing the uh, um, uh, the uh, tapered coupler, and then we'll be designing the PEC box also. Okay, and then we'll be applying the mesh and then the input uh, uh, ports. So you can see, yeah, you can see the operation has got uh, completed. So you just uh, remove the enter, uh, you just uh, remove your hand from the enter button. So you just, it will take few seconds uh, to refresh all the design. Yeah, okay, so I think, uh, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, so we click on press five and then you quickly save it. Otherwise it might show error actually. Yeah. So now what we need to do is that. So our model is ready. So, so this is your uh, domain that is going from left to right. And then here uh, it goes downward, you can see, and then it goes here um, along the straight line. Here it comes and then it again goes oblique in oblique angle. It goes upward and then it goes straight. So now we'll be designing the tapered coupler. So you can remember that I showed in the uh, topological edge state the magnetic field distribution, which was actually symmetric uh, across the domain wall. Okay, so we need to place our tapered coupler so that the field integral or field overlap becomes uh, is maximized. Okay, so if you see. So we'll be placing a tapered coupler uh, like this, okay, like this, so that it um, it, it is uh, symmetrical around the uh, interface. So what we need to do is that we again click on uh, polygon here, and then we click on P option. We select this point. We select. Uh, okay. So what we need to do is that. We will just go a bit deeper inside the domain. So we just take one, two, three. So three will be fine. Three units also will be fine. So you just start from here. Okay. Yeah. So now you just go, just check uh, this DX actually is increasing. So you take typically it should, it should be around 3000 micrometer. Okay. So you just, yeah, fine. This will be fine. Yeah, this will be, yeah, double click and then go again here, then you click P, then again click P, yeah, so your polygon is, uh, tapered coupler polygon is ready. Similarly, you do it for you press save here actually because the model is very big now, so that's why. Again, you go here, okay, so double click here. And then uh, you click on here. Yeah. So this tapered coupler is ready. You can see. So now you click again save. Now you click on polygon here. Extrude. Enter. So the arrow direction is upward. So you need to click minus 200. Then preview and then click OK. So here you don't click none to all, you click both the shapes because we need to combine, unify. We need to do the union of tapered coupler with this entire slab structure. So you add both shapes and then click OK. 
So it will do it for each of those init cells. Yeah. So now you click again save. Now again for polygon two, click enter. So it is uh, downward. So it just two hundred. And then you click preview and then OK. Then add both the shapes. Fine. Then you click on again save. So this is how the typical structure will look like. Okay, so we have designed uh, more or less this kind of structure, uh, structure here. Now we'll be designing this uh, PEC box and we'll be applying the input uh, input signal here and the dimensions are you know this is the dimension of the PEC box so for doing that uh, we'll go to the modeling you can see this is the brick or the box so it's a 3d box so just click here and you just keep it as close as possible to the structure double click then zoom out and then you go down and make sure that it the box is a slightly uh, away from those the, from the last uh, end point or uh, from the last end point of the tapered coupler so take this much distance or maybe this much distance yeah and then double click and then you do like this so this is a vertical projection along z axis so don't do do too much just slightly it will yeah slightly do like this and now you press control and then you zoom out and now you see so this is the uh, uh, projection of the box so you need to change it okay so z you need to change it so it will be minus 863.6 by 2 okay and uh, so take 863.6 by 2 why are doing the by 2 because it will exactly be placed in the middle okay so you will just get to know so you see it has shifted slightly along the left direction so you need to uh, click minus 100 here okay so that's why it will shift a bit yeah now you can see it is exactly at the center position the tapered coupler is exactly the center position of the box so similarly you do it for this also minus 430.2 by 2 uh, minus 120 then this 438.2 by 2 minus 120 okay so 120 is not required i think yeah i think uh, whether it is not cutting or not because if it cuts then it will create an error that is not cutting now in the material in place of silicon you click pc then preview then click ok ok you save it so this is the box here but we need to create a hollow box inside it it should be filled with air so this will we will do it later uh, we will do it but first we need to design it for the um, left cu coupler also we will do this same thing for left coupler minus 863.6 by 2 minus 100 by 2 minus 100 this is your minus 438.2 by 2 and this is 438.2 by 2 yeah okay then click 5 it will return back to its original position so now you can uh, see that our design is more or less ready just few um, changes uh, have to be made here so now we need to make uh, this as hollow okay so this hollow box for for this for doing this you press on f and this will appear red you double click so it will select this face okay and then 
um, so you do it uh, so you press control and then click here and rotate then again press f so you do it for all those faces not all faces so just leave the entry face so you just leave it as it is you just leave this face okay and then you go to this option this is faces and apertures you click here shape from picked faces you make click this and then you simply click okay okay so do it what i am doing is that i am creating a 2d uh, sheet kind of uh, uh, sheet uh, uh, structure for this box and then i will just simply delete this uh, rectangular the, uh, the solid rectangular box okay so that will create a hollow uh, hollow box here so you click okay then this press f and again here so you click okay here now you go to the components you search for i think uh, the yeah so solid one is this box press control and go down i think it will be in the bottom yeah solid two so you select those solids and then press delete yes now you see you can see this yeah yeah so you can see how this hollow is made okay so this is a, a sheet kind of sheet structure of the box so we just deleted the 3d solid box okay so you can see that tapered coupler goes inside the pec box so in uh, while doing the experimental analysis uh, so this uh, box will be replaced by a hollow uh, uh, metallic waveguide okay and then um, the from here uh, the input signal will be placed here so input signal will pass down and it will get coupled uh, to the tapered coupler here and this will this will come here this will come here and this will find this domain and then this this uh, the signal input signal actually will uh, will excite the edge mode will excite the uh, edge mode here inside the band gap okay and then the signal propagation will happen okay so you save it so our design is actually ready so now what we need to do is that go to simulation now you need to apply the port hmm. for your um, uh, for the uh, input signal and the um, the uh, transmission also so you press control and then you uh, move it you click f you double click you select this face and then click on waveguide port okay so this is the port number one you just click okay you don't need to make ch any changes here whatever uh, it is there it just you just keep it by default like this and click okay okay then you go to this uh, face again click f and then double click and then we get port then okay so our input ports are ready and you go to boundaries here okay so boundary is important here so here we what we do is that we we use open at space okay so we don't give any sort of any flocket period boundary or any other boundaries here so because there are many boundaries at the like periodic conducting wall unit cell electric magnetic so here we are just because it is a slab structure okay so while doing the experiment this entire uh, slab will be placed in air and then uh, this is the hollow metallic waveguide which will be connected to vna okay so it will be connected so this tapered coupler will go inside this uh, hollow waveguide structure these two tapered couplers and those hollow waveguides will be connected to the uh, uh, through some mechanisms uh, and it will get connected to the vna okay so it will be this chip will be placed in air actually so that's why the boundary condition is open at space we give some space so you tick uh, this apply in all directions and then click okay okay so you go to you if you want to check the box here you go to view and then click bounding box okay so in simulation so frequency just check it 300 to 350 yeah fine 
okay so after all this you need to add field monitor so what is field monitor field monitor is nothing but the uh, particular frequency because uh, you will be uh, getting the uh, s parameter uh, uh, plot and then you need to check the field distribution how the field is actually propagating uh, uh, this along the waveguide path so that actually it is uh, shown for particular frequency points it is not like that for every frequency point it will show so in cst you need to click on monitor so monitor will show at that uh, will show the field propagation for that particular frequency so you we are actually uh, concerned with the uh, field uh, magnetic field distribution here so you click on h field okay and then you need to provide some frequency values here so if you can remember that uh, i think the band gap starts from 312 to 339 so you uh, enter any uh, frequency inside that range so we are taking 325 it can be 310 also or 320 whatever it is 320 you just take and then click ok so there uh, the cst takes actually by default all these values 350 so 325 300 okay so you can see that 350 is outside the range of the band gap so uh, when the simulation will get over and if you uh, want to check uh, the uh, field distribution of your uh, outside the band gap you will see that the field will get scattered it will not uh, it will not be guided along the wave bed. okay that uh, we shall see it i have already done the analysis so you just save your model okay so after uh, setting up all the field monitors then you need to go to global properties meshing here the meshing is actually a bit different from what we did in console so you can see in the meshing it is the cells per wavelength okay so so the cst actually uh, by default uh, takes uh, the value of 15 here so like and you can see the statistics here in in the bottom uh, dialog box this is the smallest cell there is the largest cell and this is the number of cells so you can see how big is the number it is the one one crore so total so what what it will does uh, what it will do is that uh, the, the software actually will break down your entire structure into small small uh, actually mesh cells uh, which is known as this number of cells and the total number of cells is one crore so you can understand that how uh, big will be the simulation okay and um, like how much computation time it will take so if you increase this number if you like let's say suppose you make it 20 and then you update it you just check see how drastically it is increasing the number of cells from 1 crore to direct 2 crores so you just keep it as 15 here like if it now it actually depends up to your uh, cpu up to your uh, CPU and uh, CPU configuration, uh, your laptop or PC configurations. If you have a very strong CPU uh, and uh, like uh, and your RAM is uh, like minimum RAM is 16 GB or even greater than that, so uh, you can go, you can increase this number from uh, 15 to like uh, 20. So how it will f how it is affecting? Let me show you. A mesh, yeah. mesh view okay so in the mesh view in place of x you just click z you see how dense is the mesh it is not it is not even seen visible also so you just zoom out zoom in actually now you can see the mesh now you can see how densely it is cutting the silicon part now if you uh, make it 30 now you see how what changes it will happen so see the the then the density of mesh has increased and see from 2 crore to it, it it has gone drastically exponentially to 7 crores so that is a huge uh, uh, number of mesh cells and that will increase exponentially increase your meshing uh, computation time so you just keep it up to 15 here don't we don't need to increase okay and this is the cells per max model box edge okay so this basically we just keep it as check this box and then you can increase it to like 50 and this is the fraction of maximum cells near to model so near to model actually our model what are the fraction of maximum cells so 
this if you increase also it it can it will increase the your mesh accuracy but it will not increase your memory requirement that much see it has not increased okay but uh, it actually uh, uh, like uh, 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 enhances the meshing accuracy so you click okay here so our mesh is actually ready so you click close mesh view you save it again so after that uh, uh, so as you can see our uh, uh, model is uh, pretty much uh, ready actually uh, now you go to this in the in, uh, under the simulation box you go to setup solver so you can see in this uh, dialog box will appear you can see in the simulation setting source type it will ask for the source type so it is by default it will show all ports so we don't want don't want uh, source in all the ports because this port will be acting as input port and this is the output port so we just mention port one as the source, and we take only mode one, because this is un this will unnecessary uh, unnecessary actually it will uh, increase our uh, computational time because uh, if you click here like all ports then for first this port it will uh, check the simulation then it will show the transmission and then after completing this it will go for the second port this this port this port will be acting as the input and this will be acting as the output so it is the port uh, actually uh, they will get changed the port uh, nature okay and then it will again do the simulation so it will unnecessarily uh, increase the uh, the um, meshing uh, the computational time and then you click only mode one this is the adaptive mesh refinement you if you uh, click it then it, it will go to the adaptive mesh properties so what it does is that after every um, you can see the number of passes so what it does is that cst um, uh, breaks down your simulation into number of passes so what will what it, it will do is that if you mention like say suppose four four is the maximum passes so after four number of passes your simulation will get over so like for first pass it will uh, take number of it will take this one crore uh, mesh cells you can see one crore mesh cells and it will perform the simulation and then it will increase automatically increase its uh, it will increase uh, the the mesh cells it will make it more uh, more uh, like for fine the quality of the mesh will increase and it will again it will uh, try to uh, do the simulations and so that what you, why it does is uh, it, it does like that because in order to uh, reduce the error so it might happen like that in the first uh, first pass of simulation there might be some error in the results so what it does is that it, it tries to uh, minimize the error that's why uh, actually it uh, breaks down the simulation into number of passes so if you click four so after four passes uh, your simulation will get over so uh, uh, like you can do this because if you are um, like um, the configurations if your uh, uh, laptop or pc configuration is very good you can uh, go for it because uh, what it sometimes what happens is that uh, after one crore, it will directly second pass. It will directly jump to three, four crores, and it might happen that uh, your uh, um, your uh, system might get uh, like um, uh, you, it might lag also. Okay, so we are not going for this adaptive mesh refinement here. I just I just showed you, and uh, so this is pretty much uh, all about the simulation. Then you click apply, and then you click start. So if I click start here, the simulation will start uh, uh, like here in the dialog box here in the message box, it will start. OK, so I'm not starting here because I have already done. So I'll, because it takes time and it, it takes around four to five hours. So, yeah, this is the I think uh, yeah, this is a straight one. So I made uh, two types of uh, actually waveguide path the straight path and the uh, zigzag path okay so yeah yeah so this is more or less the same design actually so in this design you can see how the domain is actually moving so you can see from it starts from here and it, it goes from left to right in the straight direction so this is the straight domain okay so you can after uh, when the when your simulation will be over you can see this is the 1d result in the left 
panel uh, under the uh, navigation tree you can see 1d results and you can see 2d results so in 1d results if you expand it you will see the s parameter if you click it so you can see how your transmission is getting uh, uh, like you can analyze your transmission results for your particular range so you can see that from 310 to i think 339 or 335 you can see the transmission is uh, is happening uh, is happening and see uh, just after outside the uh, band gap you can see the transmission falls drastically so this is here actually the there is no transmission so uh, this is actually because of the edge state so um, as you have seen in the topological edge state uh, diagram dispersion diagram you can see that inside the band gap at an edge state appears and because of that edge state this kind of transmission happens if you want uh, to see the magnetic field distribution you can uh, expand the 2d results then h field click on h field and you click one frequency inside the band gap it will calculate the error plot so you go upward in the in the top you see this is the arrow arrows it is written so you click here and then you make it to contour and this is the absolute value okay so you can see um, like the propagation is happening so you just need to increase so this is the uh, strength bar chart so you click here click with the mouse and then you scroll up so this will actually increase the strength normalized strength actually so you can see how this is propagating and if you want to check the propagation uh, if you want to animate the propagation you go again to uh, in the top you can see the animate field is there you just click it so you can see how uh, in the animation you can see how this field is actually propagating okay so it is actually going along the domain wall and see for other these are also the domains actually but here the propagation is not happening so these are the radiated modes you can see these are the radiated modes but majority of the propagation is uh, along the domain wall okay so this is the kind of uh, magnetic field distribution you can see and if you want to check uh, for outside the band gap so now you see so this is the outside the band gap see the field is actually getting is scattered it is not getting guided along the domain wall this is only because it this frequency lies outside the band gap range and that's why you can see this kind of scattering so the field is actually getting scattered all over the slab structure it is not getting guided so this was actually for the straight wave guide and if we go for the the zigzag the, or the band wave guide you can see this is the same domain that we have made this kind this kind of the domain is coming here and then it is going like this and then actually it is uh, going like this and then um, yeah from there it goes there so you click on uh, 1d results and then you click on uh, your uh, the uh, the s parameter you can see the the results are actually are pretty much same uh, it, pre it pretty much actually uh, pretty much coincides actually with the uh, your uh, with your straight wave pet so that actually confirms that how uh, robust the topological structures are because for such sharp corners because you can you can see here so this is the 120 degree band and this 160 so 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 many angular sharp bands are there even after this also it can retain its transmission so, so well so that is also only because of the opposite group velocities if, if you can remember that we uh, i showed you uh, the uh, in the dispersion in the edge state diagram uh, at uh, k dash point and at the k point that is uh, at point uh, at point like 0.675 ia and at k is equals to minus 0.675 ia so at those two points actually uh, the if you take the tangent uh, to the curves it will give the group velocity so the group velocities were actually opposite so that's why intervalling mixing was not there and that's why we don't see any that kind that that kind of losses so whatever losses you are actually seeing here that is like here this is the minus 10 degree this is only because of the coupling coupling loss because you can see here this is the structure so from input port uh, the signal gets coupled to this uh, adiabatic coupler so from this cu coupler to come uh, to for the signal to uh, to get coupled from this uh, this coupler to this uh, uh, waveguide 
so there actually the coupling actually coupling losses happens okay so this loss is there uh, further actually uh, like optimization is required to uh, reduce this kind of losses so yeah this is the outside the uh, band gap you can see the transmission doesn't occur again for um, field uh, you can see for 2d 3d results 2d 3d results you go expand this and then you click on uh, the uh, for the frequency inside the band gap and then you click on contour so you just uh, click like this and then you click on animate okay so yeah fine or maybe you can take 305 also so you can see 300 in 305 actually it is not going it is actually scattering so in 345 also you can see how the field actually it gets scattered so in 325 you can see if you can see here the 325 actually here uh, the reflection actually it it is also dominant so that's why you can see such kind of um, uh, field actually see the these are actually because this red actually is because of the reflection um, uh, that is happening so if you take uh, for other frequency range let's say suppose here 330 so you will get you will see uh, the uh, very uh, well defined uh, transmission so i have not actually placed the field monitor here uh, for 330 now if now if i place it and then if i run the simulation it will take uh, 3 to 4 hours so which i don't want to do that but you can anyways you can uh, do it by yourself I just want to show you there. You can see how the field is actually propagating. Just check. Yeah. Just see how it. Comes. So it gets from the input uh, waveguide port. It couples to the tapered coupler, and it will come like gradually. It will come like this, and it will gradually. It will get coupled to this domain wall. There actually the coupling lo coupling losses is present. But uh, some of the majority of the field will get coupled and then it will move propagate ac uh, across the domain wall. Let's see after uh, the field actually it comes here and then actually it propagates downward. So there are actually some reflections are there here and then it will go like this and then it will follow the path and it will move uh, to the output tapered coupler. See here. Okay. So that was pretty much about the um, your what's a the topological photonics uh, based simulation uh, so you have uh, seen in the first part you have seen uh, regarding how the band diagram analysis is done and the topological edge state analysis is done and then in this uh, uh, part two second part you uh, you have seen uh, by how in the CST software, you can design this entire slab uh, slab structure, and also you can uh, you can you have seen how uh, the S parameter is visualized, and the using the field monitor, you can see the transmission actually how it happens, uh, and out, outside the band gap, uh, how actually it is uh, getting affected, uh, how it actually the field actually scatters, and inside the band gap, uh, the for inside the band gap for the for any frequency inside the band gap, how it actually um, how the edge mode is excited and then how uh, the field actually it propagates along this uh, interface so this was uh, pretty much uh, regarding the um, your topological photonics structure and um, yeah fine uh, so this is all about uh, the topological photonics so here actually we uh, excite the t mode here uh, why because uh, just I wanted to let you know because um, uh, the dimensions here so that sorry so the dimensions here actually uh, these are actually typical standard dimensions of WR3 waveguide so why we are taking WR3 uh, that is uh, because we are working in the frequency of uh, the W band actually 250 to around uh, like 350 gigahertz okay so in this uh, frequency um, the name of the hollow waveguide actually it is it is named as wr3 okay so each uh, so if we go up also in the frequency so it will be like um, 
डब्ल्यू आर फोर मे बी और मे बी डब्ल्यू आर टू पॉइंट एट समथिंग आई जस्ट कैन नॉट रिकॉल इट प्रॉपरली सो इट्स डायमेंशन आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट ऑफ डब्ल्यू आर थ्री ओके सो बिकॉज दीज आर सम स्टैंडर्ड डायमेंशन फॉर विच द इनपुट टी मोड दैट इज द फंडामेंटल मोड इयर सो वी आर एक्चुअली डिस्कसिंग अब द फंडामेंटल मोड सो द फंडामेंटल मोड विल गेट एक्साइटेड फ्रॉम दिस पोर्ट टू इन साइड द स्ट्रक्चर ओके सो इफ यू टेक डिफरेंट डायमेंशन यूर फील्ड विल नॉट गेट एक्साइटेड ओके so that's why uh, this is the typical dimensions uh, that has been taken from the literature so or from uh, from the uh, company from various websites uh, you can get uh, like those who manufacture all these uh, wr3 wave guides uh, they actually mention these kind of dimensions uh, so it depends on the frequency that's why for specific frequency ranges uh, these dimensions are present so who here we are using this kind of dimension and uh, uh, for the excitation of fundamental t mode uh, and uh, in practical actually this pc box is replaced with a metal so uh, a metallic uh, wave guide will be present and this will actually yeah if i take uh, it is here yeah. uh, so so if i take uh, yeah so from there actually uh, there are actually a frequency extender will be there which will uh, so uh, so this is the vna setup will be typically the vna will be like this okay and they are actually the signal will come and uh, vna actually has a range of around like uh, in the below 100 gigahertz so and your uh, wave propagation actually supports uh, uh, in the range of Like 250 to 300 gigahertz, so we need to up convert the frequency. So this is done by frequency extenders. Okay, so these extenders will be multiplying the frequency like this uh, by uh, number of times, and this will pass through this hollow wave guide. This signal will cross there, and whatever transmission will happen, so it will again demultiply. So it will shift it uh, to the compatible range of VNA. This uh, Uh, extenders and then it will connect it will get connected to this vna here and this output signal will go there and then you can see the transmission here okay the measured transmission like this so this is how uh, the experimental uh, analysis actually is done okay and uh, for from the fabrication perspective uh, point of view so this is basically the uh, this is uh, this is the actually the slab silicon slab only so you take one silicon wafer and then you lay down all those uh, geometrical uh, designs using the uh, lithography process and then you do the etching part uh, and because because this your uh, the unit cell is a rhombus okay and the triangles actually are are basically the hole so it, it's a see through directly it's a see through if you check this Discard this, yeah. If you check this, see, it's a directly, it's a hole. So uh, your etching process should be uh, very uh, accurate, such that your um, whatever chemical or whatever process you are employing, uh, the etching should be very accurate. That such that your structure, uh, the the topology uh, or the the shape of the shape does not get uh, disoriented. Okay, uh, and um, Uh, and you get a uh, you get a, a clean uh, hole hole actually uh, see through a kind of structure for, uh, in, in your silicon wafer and then for the coupler it is basically the silicon uh, part itself the extension of silicon so you uh, you using the lithography process also you design the coupler here and then uh, the the slab is actually placed in air and then it is the couplers are uh, inserted into the pc the or, or the sorry the uh, hollow metallic wave guide and then uh, the experimental analysis is done so that is all for the um, uh, demonstration i uh, hope uh, it is clear to everyone how uh, these uh, um, band diagram simulation the topological edge state uh, sim dispersion uh, uh, diagrams and or the final wave, wave guide simulation is done So that is all for this lecture. Um thank you. So if you have got any queries regarding this video tutorial, you can always drop an email to me 
at this particular email address mentioning MOOC, um, Photonic Crystal and this uh, tutorial 2 on the subject line. Thank you. Thank you.